Take this mild drug and you will have a nice sleep without any nightmares. You're among friends here. You must trust us. You will sleep now. A long sleep. Hey, what's up? What's up, Unseen? We got you as a mod, looks like. Okay. How's everybody doing? big chilling we are it's pretty early for me to be honest i'm good I drank a little bit of whiskey last night but i'm gonna be okay got some coffee Sick, sick, sick. Okay. We're back in business. Third stream. It's going to be f a fun one today. Let's see what's up. Here we go. Shank track breakdown. Yes, it's pretty early for the stream, huh? We're still figuring out like the best uh, time to go live. Yeah. Okay. Let's play it. Let's see if we're getting some sound. By the way, this is a very heavy project, so it's a bit slow. And I didn't want to flatten, freeze, and bounce some tracks because I wanted to show them to you guys. So it's going to be a bit slow probably in parts. It's also, it's a project uh, we wrote when I was still using PC and not Mac. So some of the plugins I don't have anymore. So I had to kind of replace them with uh, other, you know, other plugins. So it might even sound a bit different because I went over it yesterday and changed some th some things just so it's balanced and it sounds good. Back twist uh, breakdown in the future, please. Yeah, we could do back twist as well. We do... We 
could do back twist and shark shooter and some of the other ones. Okay, let's see. Let's start. You know what? Let's get this out of the way. Let's get the master chain out of the way. Just so you guys see it. This is it. I don't use a uh, standard clip anymore. But it's pretty much not doing anything. Just like it is doing something. It's just clipping. And a little bit of limiting. That's it. On Pro L. That's on the master. It's pretty simple. And I think there's some automation. Yeah. So ev just the drops are half a dB louder than the rest of the song. That's that, that for the master. Then everything that's not drums um, and vocals, I think. Yeah. Go for here, through the sidechain bus. Or no. Oh, wow, this is the old template, so no. I don't think this is doing anything. Yeah, it's off. Never mind. So, okay, drums. <laughs> it's the old template. I don't use it anymore. What are the lyrics at? Oh, 50. What's oh, 50? Let's see. I got my shank in my just stretched out we're gonna go through everything so drums let's see I don't know how in-depth you guys want me to go so I could just play because some of this stuff is kind of complicated. Some is pretty straightforward. So you can see like all the main drums are in this one channel. Like the main kicks and snares. Um, everything else... is right here we have some cool scratch effects and tape effects that act as like fillers yeah so stuff like this I could go into if you guys want but um, this is Superior Drummer. I showed last stream how I make some drums in that. Yeah. So these are the drums, right? Nothing special. I guess it, they're kind of cool. So get that out of the way. That was loud as fuck. Wow. I almost died. <laughs> well, okay. Thank you, Yakin. Um. Just play them a bit. Um.
Yeah, drums. If anybody wants me to go into more detail about the drums, I can't. Okay, so we got the main vocals. That would be this. Um, let's see. When the shit hits the fan, I got my shank in my hand. Do you guys want to see that? Want me to unfreeze that? What else? When the shit hits the fan, I got my shank in my hand. I got, yeah. When, when the shit hits the fan, I got my shank in my hand. That's it. Um, that's just a delay, I think. Yeah. Okay, let's look into, we got a kick question. And the vocals. Okay, so the vocals were already on them. It's a Crooklyn Daggers, uh, Dodgers a cappella. It's an old hip hop uh, group. Um, so yeah, it sampled. Don't tell anybody though, so we get, don't get copyrighted. I'm kidding. Let's see. The kick. I think I probably, yeah, I didn't make it this pro in this project. Um, I added a hi hat to it, but pretty much, I probably made it on a different track or took it from a different track. Did some. EQing to it and clip, clipped it, but yeah, super simple. That is the main kick of the song. We were on Cubase. Um, it's been almost a year since we moved to Ableton. What is the process for your vocals? Where do you find sample and what effects? Um, as I said, a lot of old acapellas, and we still use sp Splice quite a bit for samples. Some of them I even record if I have an idea of something like uh, a certain word or, I don't know, like a pre-drop. Sometimes I, I will uh, record myself. Um, yeah, let's see if I can, let's open this vocal, see what I did to it. We can loop it. Maybe it could be cool if I just turn off everything. You guys can hear it. Right, an effing collab sounds shank sounds like that's cool. Okay, so on the vocal bus, like the group, not much is happening. It looks like uh, some soothe when the shit hits the fan. I got my shank and limiting. Oh, and sidechain, these are sidechains. If anybody wants to see. The old right sidechain settings. These are it. 
back when we used to use shaper box we don't use it anymore though okay so let's look what's up in with the vocals some high passing getting rid of some low end this plugin which is very cool it gets rid of some of that low mid a bit of, and a bit of that high mid range when it gets a bit too harsh I use nectar on it I don't I don't normally use this to be honest probably used the vocal assistant and then changed it a little bit so this was just me trying to get the vocal to sound better I guess oh we got a donation I missed it for some reason I don't think it showed oh I can see it here in the feed thank you Yoni for the donation we'll keep it up thank you All right. Got rid of some annoying frequencies. Oh, and this is kind of cleaning cleaning up the vocal. I can see now. It's just automated with this. Yeah. You can see it it go down between words to clean up the, like the noise in the recording and the acapella was pretty dirty so we needed that and then just the heavy got, compression hits the fan, I got my in my hand. Ah, but just blend it in uh, some soothe yeah. Hits the fan, I got my shank in my head. That one again. Don't know what this Hits is matching. Fan, oh yeah. The effects are probably more interesting. Let's turn all this on. Hits the fan, I got my shank in my head. Yeah, there's a lot going on. Does this interest you guys? I could go through it, but it's a lot to go through. Oh, I bet I matched this. Yeah. Because this vocal sounded better. And I wanted them to sound pretty similar. So I probably matched this with the Ozone EQ. And then, yeah, so all sorts of effects. Let's see, what do we have here? This is comb effects. So it's all automated in, right? You can see the utility before the effect. So this effect, effect comes just for that one word hand it's probably a comb filter yeah let's turn all the other ones off Got my in my head. so you could hear it come come in on the last word then we have a slap delay You can hear it echoing in the back. It's a cool effect. Um, some reverb. Another delay that comes probably. Let's see. Yeah, just for this part. then a long delay what where is that let's see here okay yeah 
I like doing it on the same track. Sometimes it gets messy, but if you keep the names, it's kind of just name everything. You keep control over it, I guess. And chorus. Grain delay. Where is that? Let's see. Just for this, I guess. Drama. Oh, that's the yeah. So let the drama slide. You can hear that come in. So let the drama slide. In between. So let the drama slide. Kind of cool. So let the drama slide. Used. Manipulator. So let the drama slide. So yeah. let the drama slide. So there's the effects. So let the drama slide. Without them. So let the drama slide. With. So let the drama slide. Way more interesting. It's all about like little ear candy and stuff like that. And also helping everything sit in the mix. Because without them, it would be probably... Yeah. Let's try it without. It's kind of dry. Boring. This would be pretty similar. It's just a bit more affected. I don't think we need to open up and look through That's everything. That's what I'm talking about. I could just play them. That's what I'm talking about. I don't remember how I did this effect. Probably what I like to do is, uh, let's see uh, if I could grab. this for like the buildups and stuff like that I like to take uh, the vocal or whatever let's just duplicate it a bunch of times and I really like using portal everything takes an hour in this project it's, it's very heavy I like using this. Um, you can go through the presets and just find a cool one. And just automate it, pretty much. Like, it has a lot of cool presets that, you know, that you could use to just create hype and stuff like that. That was probably frequency shifter. I think that's probably how I did that. Yeah. So yeah. I really recommend getting this. It's a great plugin for like stretching, weird delays, and just effects. It's great for sound design, making basses as well. Um, any questions about uh, vocals? How long did it take me to get used to Ableton? About a week. For real. Yeah, it was kind of uh, scary at first. I didn't want to switch because I was so used to Cubase. And um, yeah, once I made the move, it was like, um, I don't know, a week, two, until I was like writing full tracks in Ableton. And I never looked back ever since. Uh, let's see, what else? What's this? Shank vocals. Oh, that's the ending. I got my shank in my head. 
how we stretched, time stretch, and did all that. Again. Let the drama slide. Yeah. You got the. That's the same vocal, just not filtered. I have a chant that goes in the background. Got another one here. Oh, this one's off. For some reason. I don't think uh, we ended up using it in the track. No, I think it's supposed to be there. I don't know why it's muted. Yeah. And this one as well. You could barely ter ter um, tell it in the mix that it's in there, but yeah, it adds something, I guess. Like in between, like if I play these together, they kind of work together. Let the drama yeah. slide. Nice. Yeah, so those are the vocals. Are we planning to involve more rock elements? Yes, yes. I know we used to do a lot of rock and metal stuff in... The dogma resistance uh, era and a bit after that as well but yeah it's not over we're gonna keep doing that as well for sure um and the first track on ableton i think was juggernaut that's the first one yeah yeah 100 percent juggernaut that would be the first one so everything before that was Cubase. Um, yeah. Okay, on to bass. So we have this group, which is the verse basses, and there's only two for this track. The first one is the 808. What free plugin synth EQ effects do you recommend? Free plugins. Um, Vital. I I bought it. Um, I have the advanced version. I think like I don't know if that's what it's called, the advanced or whatever. Um, but I I believe you could get it for free. Vital. It's a great synth. If you're just getting into sound design and all that, I recommend it. Do you guys want to see this uh, bass? Let's see if we could... Uh, what's up in here? Okay. Let's take everything off. All the post-processing. It's going to be way, way different, probably. Let's turn this off as well. So this is the bass without it, anything. Just a sine wave with some harmonics that I probably drew in. A little bit of distortion. Yeah. Oh, that goes into this rack. That um, from uh, he he makes great Ableton racks. I think I picked it up when I moved to Ableton. I was looking for racks because I was new to Ableton. I didn't know anything. I just searched Google. I stumbled across or YouTube or something like that. I stumbled across his channel, saw his racks, and I grabbed 
one of them, one of the packs he has. So shout out to him. He makes great uh, Ableton racks. I'll see if I can find the link. I'll post it for you guys. You should really check it out. Let's see. I'll show you guys what this does. Yeah. Just search for his name and it'll come up. Mm. Okay, so that is basically this uh, preset is basically this rack, just a split of three bands, and each one of them has an amp on them, on it, right? And that makes the sound go from this. to this and I believe this is being automated as well yeah so the crossover is moving with the notes so it doesn't stay static I'm using this max for live note follower to move that around yeah that's the bulk of the sound and it's been probably widen a bit. That's really not that important. Some EQ. Some more distortion. Just on the high end. Five, 550 and up. Some soothe to clean it up. Yeah, so it's basically destroying the sound and cleaning it up. That's a lot of sound design, I guess. Destroying it, cleaning it up, polishing it, destroying it again. Is that loud just for me? Because I get a mini heart attack every time somebody follows. Thank you for the follow. Whew. Okay. Um. Yeah, that's cool. Some clipping. This is basically uh, bringing back some sub bass. It's a great preset. Yoi. Some effects, also in parallel, some reverb, distortion, and more distortion. This is a great free plugin, by the way. Um, yeah. Very good. That goes into some more EQ, a lot of EQ. Compression. Some more compression. Some more EQ. Yeah. I don't think this was on. Or was it? No, probably not. Some saturation. Get it nice and loud. Yeah. Eight oh eight hits the fan. Okay, let me freeze these back because I think. We're going to run into issues if we don't. Does anybody have any questions?
Yeah, it's sidechain. Um, I'll go through the sidechain the minute it's it, uh, finished freezing, because it's uh, yeah. This project's pretty heavy. Tom's doing well. I saw him last night. He came over for, uh, we had a very big Friday dinner. We had like 12 people, 14 people over. Um, and he came. We had a good time. Shank VIP right now. <laughs> yeah. Maybe we will. Maybe we can uh, export some stems and... Uh, Try to make something. If we do a Shank VAP, what genre genre does it need to be? What do you guys think? Because it's 145. Hey, Bob Marley, thank you for the follow. Appreciate it. House. House. Halftime drum and bass. Or color bass. Color base. That's interesting. Not really our style, though. I'm not a huge fan of that genre. Moonbathon. Yeah, drum base. Drum base could be a bit too fast for it. Well, okay. Let's see. What, after we go through everything, Shank VIP, where? Maybe here. I'm not. I'm not sure. It's been requested. Psytrance, yeah. It's. Uh, it could really be easy to make Psytrance out of it because pretty much the same BPM. I think House could be nice. Ricky, thanks for the follow. Okay, so the side chain for this group, yeah, goes to something like this. This is the kick. So yeah, the low end is getting ducked a bit more than the high end. Just so it sounds. Let's see if I could play them together. Um, I don't think it will work. Oh, it does. Yeah, so I, I didn't want the ducking effect to be that noticeable for this part. I wanted to feel it like the bass would be an extension of the kick. So it's a bit more transparent. Let's see. Next sound is this. It's like a Reese bait bass patch that I made, fused with like uh, horn samples. Pretty simple.
Yeah, but it's a useful little instrument. I like it. I use it a lot in a lot of tracks. Um, basses. Okay. So this is the main side chain of the drop. All the basses go through this. One for the kick, one for the snare. The snare one is a bit shorter. Um, and that's just being clipped at zero dB, making sure no, nothing passes zero. But it's pretty much doing nothing because all these sounds are already clipped and kind of they stay out of the way of each other like I make sure to cut them especially their sub bass just so they don't overlap and create problems shank VAP but it's tear out <laughs> you want it to be tear out that's interesting pretty much the opposite of what the original is. We could try it. So yeah, we have all these sort of uh, little sounds. Like sub drops, stuff like that. Yeah, bass house. I'm thinking like maybe we try to make a, a house version could be cool this one's kind of neat um, this one is a bass it sounds like a vocal but it's a bass pretty sure I made it in serum but it's frozen so we n might never know yeah this is the one shot for like the stab, the first stab of the drop. That goes into this sound. Let's see. Oh, we have a little surprise. Let's see if I can make it happen. Hmm. One sec. Let's see. There we go.
Say hi. I can hear you. Why isn't it showing? Hold on. Can you guys hear Tom? You're coming out pretty loud here on my end. Yeah, they can hear you. You need to speak though. There we go. Too low. I'll bring him up. Matt, thanks for the follow. We are breaking down Shank. Thank you. Yeah. I can hear myself through your stream, Tom. Through your uh, camera. For some reason. Yeah, I think so. Then use just the phone's uh, microphone. Try talking now. Let's hear you. Tom is in the 1950s. <laughs> Is this better? Is this better for you guys? Um, let's see. Boomer moment. <laughs> Yeah. 
very quiet. That's weird, because I'm hearing him super loud. You should be hearing what I'm hearing. Now we can't hear you at all. I don't know what happened. Yeah. Well, now you're gone completely. So, uh, yeah, it's been fun having you on. Okay, cool. You guys want to continue with the stream and we'll have Tom just dance or something? Just bob his head? Okay, his mere presence is enough. There we go. That's awesome. Okay, so Shank is basically all based on this one riff, I'd call it. I don't know. And little fillers in between. Right? I think this whole track was made in Serum, by the way. So I could show some of the sound design if you guys want. How do we... Okay, we got some questions. Let's look into it. If we both have studios, how much time do we work together and how, how, how much time separately? Um, the main studio is in my house. So this is where we produce the songs. In Tom's place, he pretty much works more on DJ sets. So we work here out of my spot. Um, how do we master the songs in lofts? I don't pay attention to lofts. Like, I know how loud stuff can get. Um, and then I just get it there. I don't read meters too much. Just use my ears. And sometimes I'll throw like a reference track and just compare, uh, do like a, you know, ear test to see if it's loud enough, too loud. Sometimes, a lot of times it's too loud. I, I end up taking shit down. Yeah. Let's see. Let's, I'm just going to let him know that he doesn't have any sound because I don't know if he hears me even. How do we get the sound? Okay. Let's do this on a macro level then. Let's close up everything. I'll try to make it. Let's see. Yeah. Let's open up span. This is a very handy trick, by the way, that I was very stoked about um, when I moved to Ableton. On the master track... I have these two. Wow. Wooly, thanks for the follow. I have these. Oh, there we go. We... No, but now I can hear myself through your stream. That's truly boomerish.
No sound again. Okay. We'll just keep going. Um, yeah, so the drums. Oh, wait, I was explaining about this uh, rack thing. So I have here three of the analyzers that I use. This really doesn't matter this much. I sometimes look at this, not as much anymore, but I still have it in the template. And they're all, um, they all have like hotkeys assigned to them, right? So if I press Command K, you could see this one is two, right? What is it? Um, two, this little thing here, and three. So yeah, if I press on the number two, I can bring up the oscilloscope. Number three would be span. And it's very easy to just. That's good. Look at him with a crutch. You could just bring it up easily and just look at stuff, right? So if we look at the drums, they're hitting zero dB. Right? So they're very, very loud. The loudest they can get. And they're going through this clipper that shouldn't be any doing anything to the drum because they're already clipped here. Yeah. And here before the compression. Yeah. And then it's just getting the right sidechain. The right sidechain, I mean. So in between... If we look at span again, just the bases, they are hitting zero as well. But when the kick and the snare are hitting, they're not. They're completely silent, right? If I take this off. Then this mix would not work at all. So... It's all about the side chain and the volume, basically, having everything hit zero. Like if you try to if you try to get this volume with like compressors and OTTs and stuff like that, it won't sound very clean. And you won't get as loud. Like there are ways, but not this loud. This is very loud, let's see. That's not really max 10. If we look at, let's see, let me do this for a sec. This is the analyzer I use. So yeah, minus three, minus two. Even more than that at places. Yeah, so we got Tom doing physical therapy while we're breakdowning Shank. He doesn't have any sound. Yeah, so don't put OTT on the master. And by the way, try refraining from putting OTT on almost everything. Like, I will never put OTT on drums or sub-bass material. Um... There are exceptions. Sometimes I do that when when you can get get away with it. But yeah, most of the times I won't I won't do it. Yeah, so that's that. Mm, bases. So yeah, a lot of just different sounds. Um,
This one's kind of dope. Mm-hmm. That's going on somewhere in the background. Yeah, I, w I wouldn't put OTT on a sub because it's uh, fucking up all the fa phase relationships and it will make your subs look and just be less powerful. I wouldn't do that. We can get into stuff like that, the more technical side of things, if you guys want, but I don't think it's right for this stream. Um, maybe after the breakdown, I can show you guys what I mean. Um, yeah, so these are like, a lot of this is frozen, so there's not much to show. Turn up Ableton. Yeah, I can do that. Oh, yeah, it's, it's really quiet. So let the drama slide. Is that better? Um, is that st uh, stab S the same one from Lock the Block? No, no. Do you guys want to see some bass design, or should we move on to some other layers of the song? There's this one as well. Q kid, where did that guy go? <laughs> um, no, unfortunately, I don't play the drums anymore. I do have an electronic kit in the closet right there that my girlfriend got me for my birthday like two years ago. I played it like two or three times, and I had to put it in the closet because there's just no not enough room for it here in the studio hopefully when we move i get to have a bigger studio and then i'll have place for it and i can use it and hook it up to the studio and all that and play some uh drums for the new tracks but yeah let's look at um okay so the main sound unfortunately is when I made it, I froze it and bounced it to audio. And then I wanted to go back to the preset, but it didn't sound the same anymore. Something something kind of got lost and it stopped sounding. I don't know. It sounded just different. So I was stuck with the audio and had to make this audio bounce work. So let's see. This is what I had. Why do I keep doing that? Let's see. Let's take it off. So, yeah, I'm not doing much to it in terms of, like, the sound of it. It's pretty close to the final product. Some EQ. And okay, expansion. This is a very handy tool. I don't see this talked about enough. Um... I'm not going to go into the technical details too much, but basically it's the opposite of compression, right? So it's cleaning up. So it makes this band last for less time, right? Okay, here it's a bit muddy. Like if I solo this. Let's turn this up in volume. It makes it snappier. Right? 
so it's a bit cleaner. Same for the high end. Yeah, that's that. That goes into some more EQ, some more EQ, a secret rack I'm not going to show today, some soothe on the sub bass for some reason. I don't know why I did that. Compression on the sub bass. Some of these decisions are, you know, are made in the moment and then you just keep going. Um, okay, this is kind of weird. Yeah, so I split the band into three parts, right, so the low end, and e each band has a different shape, a different curve, and that's being triggered by this MIDI track. I had to do a lot of workarounds to make this sound work, because uh, I couldn't use the preset anymore that I made. Um, yeah, so the low end is doing this, it's a bit more, like, you know, longer. The mid range is getting this. Like if I take it that off. Want it to be snappier. On the, on the high end, it's very snappy. Yeah. Just tightening the sound up. That's with, this is without. Doesn't seem like a huge difference, but it is. In the in like the whole mix, it makes it tighter. Um, and I think I'm automating the rate. Yeah, for this part, the rate of a uh, shaper box, so it goes a bit faster. For the faster bits. Um. Yeah. After that, we're what? Adding some more soothe. Yeah, if uh, I wouldn't do all this processing today, to be honest. But it t turned out fine, I guess. EQ, more EQ. This is probably reverb. Yeah. Very short um, and low amounts of reverb. I kind of added more signal to the center. Saturation. Yeah. And then some filtering for, oh, probably the fill over here. Yeah. Low pass, high pass, and a wash effect of some reverb. And also width. Yeah, that's the main sound. Any question about this one? I wish I had the patch to show you guys, but I don't. I'm sorry. We could look into different patches. Deep noisy sub bass. Yeah, I can show that one. Do you mean this? Because that's a combination. If I solo the drums, you can hear one of them is a hi-hat. It's, I believe, a noise shot. That's layered. Am I proud of what? Of uh, Tom's physiotherapy or the track? Okay, we can look into that bass. Basically, it's um, layered... I think Tom's doing a great job. Um, ooh, I'm sorry about the mic. Sippy. Look, we got Sippy in the chat. Um, this is probably, yeah, Operator. Let's see what we have here. Um, just white noise, basically. Um, okay. Let me take off this. 
so it's more apparent. So we have a low sub note. Hopefully you guys can hear this. You won't be able to hear this if you're um, on a phone. Um, but it's a noise and a sub oscillator being summed together into distortion. So you get that, turns into this, right? And then it's just EQ'd. So you're left with the top noise being all crunched up. And that is layered with that bass, pretty much. So if I take this off, let's... Boring. That's That really adds a lot, right? It's like missing it. I don't know what this is doing. Let's see. Shaper box. Let's see. It's... Mm, yeah. It's automated for this part alone, looks like. Yeah. To have a different shape. Um, so yeah, let's look into this bass. The first one. Um, okay, so there's a couple of three layers basically for this one. See if we can, I don't know, let's leave the processing on, otherwise, it will be very quiet. So, this is the first layer. You know what? Let's take it off actually. Let's take it off. Uh, yeah. This is a preset, I guess, from some pack or something. I don't know. I probably changed it a little bit. But this is what I had. That goes into overdrive. Some corpus. That cleans up the top end, like the, it gets rid of like the digitalness of the sound. Effects, what is this? That's cool. Just adding like a stereo chorus effect. Right? It gives it life and also it makes it a bit different every time it hits because the chorus is modulating very slowly, as you can see. 1.67 1. 1. Uh, hertz. Um, so each hit turns out to be a bit different. The delay does. Yeah. That goes into OTT. Oh, I use this one for some reason. I don't know why. I don't use that anymore. Some compression, some EQing, and a limiter. Yeah. I use the left and right mode. It's not a huge difference, but be because it's a very wide sound, I wanted the left and the right to be a bit more ba balanced. So, yeah. That's one layer. Second layer is the sub, which is what? Oh, it's an old, old uh, yeah, just uh, I don't use this anymore. But basically, a sign with a, a few harmonics. What ODT am I using now? Um, um, I've been using a lot. If I do use it, I do use like the regular Ableton preset. Um, and there's another one I think I used in this project and I'll show it that I really like. Um, yeah, subs being 
distorted a little bit. Pretty clean still. And then filtered to get rid of the shit you don't want. Um, then a noise layer. Pretty simple one. Just AC hum. Yeah, filtered out. And all that together sounds like that. That goes into this EQ. Did I turn up the effects? I think I didn't know. Oh, yeah, it's being cut out later on. Okay, that's being EQ'd like this. I don't know why I did that. But this is probably automated. No, it's not. Probably ended up not using this. And there's shaper box. Okay. This is being triggered by this little MIDI external instrument thing. <clears throat> and it's being distorted here with like this curve to get that initial hit off it. Um, and also the volume is being cut off. So all that stuff about the delay pretty much uh, gets cut off. It doesn't matter anyway. Um, bass mono, making sure it's mono. Um, then even some more, just making sure nothing gets by so it doesn't inter interfere with the next sound. That's really the kind of detail that you need to pay that you need to pay attention to if you want to get very loud and clean is making sure sounds don't bleed out to other sounds. At, at, at least like the low end. High end is fine. Some of the mid, mid range as well, but the low end should really be one sound at the time, at a time. If you want it to be very loud. Um, if not, and you're making something experimental, then you don't need to. Can I explain uh, why am I using the oscilloscope yeah this is like the most powerful tool i think for audio uh engineering basically i i look at it to see the shape the final shape of my sounds because when you have them in midi it's hard to, to know what they look like when i'm working on <clears throat> sub bass especially i want to make sure that i'm looking at a very nice sound form, waveform, right? Like this. Like, if we throw OTT on it, you'll see what happens. It changes completely, right? It no, no longer looks like a sine wave. That's way fatter and it lasts for a longer time, means it's a stronger sub. You see how the cycles are weird now with OTT on it? Yeah, anyway, that's a short explanation of why I don't use OTT on sub, but um. Does Tom hear me? Uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure he has a stream on. But we can't hear him. So we just get to see him. Um, yeah. Pro-Q. And this is probably just the reverb. Same one for the room. Not very interesting. That goes after all the uh, cutting of the sound that I did, right? So it does have a little tail, but that tail is very, you know, it's pretty much high end and upper mids. Um, it's being saturated. Uh, yeah, he just had a second surgery. But he's doing well. 
You can see he's moving around and he'll be jumping in no time. Yeah, that's being clipped a little bit after unlimited. Yeah, that's that sound. Let's freeze everything. We don't want the project to crash. So, do you guys have any more questions? You want to move on to synths or... What do you mean are they sidechain as well with the hats? Like from the hats or are the hats uh, sidechain? I think most of the synths in this track are uh, samples. I don't think uh, there's any sound design in terms of like um, classic like, you know, synth sound design. The second sound, like of the second drop, or in, in the first drop. Oh no, they're only ducked from the kick and the snare. Um, and there's a bit more ducking I could show later, like another layer of side chain. And the first or the second sound, like the boom, that da 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 da. I showed the yeah, so the the main bass is kind of gone. Different variation. That's a good question. Um, I wish I could show you guys. We'll fa find a sound here that's still in MIDI, and I'll show you guys how some cool ways to go about that about using like getting variation of one patch that could be a nice tutorial to make actually I haven't seen anybody do that multiband sidechain sometimes I do I showed in the beginning of the stream when I showed the 808 from the verse that's being multiband sidechained but you need to be very um, weary of the, like, the multiband sidechain options because the crossover points can fuck up the phase a lot of your tracks and your bases, whatever's going through it. So I keep it very high, around 500 hertz, maybe 400. I don't go low. Like I, I won't put, put a crossover very low. Sorry about the freezing, guys. It's uh, just a precaution. Do you have any more questions in the meantime? You can see Tom's purple band connected to a pool table. To me, it looks like a beginning of a very funny YouTube video. If it snaps. Hopefully it doesn't. Do I use these tools to change the sound for specific venues, like outside versus inside? No. There's one export of the song, and that's what's being played everywhere. That would drive me nuts if I had to do, like, different mix, it, mix downs for different places. Well, any interesting new genre I'd like to play with, uh... Hmm. Maybe house. A little bit more. Yeah. Dive into house music a little bit. I have wrote like a few ideas. Drum some sample pack for sure. I, I want to do that. I think we'll maybe start uh, doing it on stream making the sample pack 
Um, I think that could be cool for you guys all to also to see how I go about making drums and then, you know, making a sample pack out of it. How many hours do you spend a day producing on average? I'd say between eight to 10 hours a day. Sometimes more than that, but on average, probably nine. Hopefully soon we'll get to, to Denver. I hope. Okay, let's look for a sound that's kind of cool. Oh, you know what? This this one. This is the one you asked, right? Let's see. This one's a bit more complicated, it looks like. Uh, progressive house or more fu or more bass future. Uh, I guess more bass house is more my vibe at least. Bass house and like uh, yeah, I don't know. We had a for the down with your love. We had a a bass house down with your love VIP, and we ended up not releasing it. We could try to open it up might be interesting. I don't remember how it sounds at all. Okay, let's see. Fate first layer. It's basically the sound, right? This is happening using FM. Super simple. Um Okay, so let's say this is your sound, whatever. Just getting a variation would be super simple. Changing the semitones of the FMing oscillator, right? This is like the most simple way. Changing the FM value as well. There you go. That's a variation. Oh, did I fuck it up? I don't remember wh where it was. 45. Adding a warp mode to the second oscillator. Super. There's a lot of options, you know? All of this would change the sound drastically. Yeah, that's being used with spectral. I think this is. Oh, this is doing a lot to the sound, actually. Not that much, but yeah, enough. OTT. Kilohertz distortion. Interesting. Some more multiband compression. Um, EQ, that's following the pitch, pretty unnecessary if you ask me, but I did it. Oh, this is probably doing a lot. So you, this is kind of a thing I do a lot apparently, is use Shaper Box to just change the envelope of a sound. Um... Very different, right? Um, yeah. Then we have this layer. Which is like, yeah. It's pretty much the same patch, probably. And I've used a variation. I changed the, uh, this. Probably the FM amount. Yeah, took it down. Changed the... Um, note pretty much the second oscillator is playing because this is a very wide sound and needed something in the center then a sub which sounds way more yeah this is a trick uh, I use I do when I have a very thin FM sound 
the macros to only have one knob? What do you mean? And what triggers the volume shaper? This right here. This chain? Oh, wow. It's triggering a lot of shit. Just an external instrument. I added as a separate chain. Yeah, this is triggering shaper box. Second one is tri for some reason. Oh, there's another shaper box. And then the third one. Another shaper box. Wow, what's going on with this sound? Oh, I know why. Because of all of the layers, they each have a shaper box. See, the sub has one. This thing, the mono signal has one. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I learned this self-taught, basically. Um, yeah, so back to the sub. Let's look on this, at this thing. Let's take off this right so this trick is pretty much a square wave oh and something else to notice this is not a uh, sync to the grid you can see it's happening a bit later for the wonky kind of feel of the track um yeah so a square wave with a saw wave an octave up so that gives us both odd and even harmonics on different octaves kind of cool it's a very warm sounding sub bass the one thing you need to kind of look out for is the fa the phase of the two oscillators like changing this would give you different results I really like this one, probably, so I went with it. Right, if I put that down, a bit thinner, you could tell, right? These, This is just a bit fatter, sounds better. Um, and that's being also shaper boxed. to fit the sound better and low passed and then automate it I guess just at one point I cut it off right here because there was a competing sound this kick thingy and I didn't want the sub of that sound interfering with that make the pan the pans uh oh the pan layer for the snare I could show it. I think, yeah, I think uh, we can see it in this track. Yeah. Tom did a great job with the physio, huh? He's resting now. Is he in the chat though? I don't. I don't think so. Yeah, and then what else? Probably noise. Yeah. Yeah. Again, just noise high passed um, with a sine wave being distorted and then EQ'd out to leave just the noise. Um, and there's this layer, which I'm not sure. Oh, there you go. So three variations of one sound in one patch. Pretty impressive, I guess. Yeah, so I used the unison, bumped it up an octave. <sighs> and that's being added for the second part, like the B part of the drop, I guess. It's, it's pretty, you know, low. You can hear it come in, but it's just... If I turn it off, it adds something like, oh, the note follower. Yeah, I didn't show actually what it does. 
it basically interprets the MIDI note that the you know and turns it into hertz so you could basically um let's see where am i using it right here one so you just map i'll show you just with this let's make like a bell so this track if i map the frequency of this one bell now it will follow whatever note is playing and I can you know change the semitones up or down kind of find where I want it to be you see it follow it's amazing I looked for something like this for a long time so now we, we can make changes like that you know Um, yeah, so that's this sound. Then it's being EQ'd all together. Again, cutting everything off. Um, some parallel distortion on the high end to make it brighter. Reverb. Filters, probably for this part right here. Yeah. Then, oh. I think I added this just for this part. To keep it consistent and loud enough. I would probably do the automation uh, a bit further along. Like up, uh, not at not when I'm just writing ideas and stuff, because then you get bogged down by all the detail. It's just uh, when you're in the like the creative flow, I rather stay there and you know focus as much as I can on writing the idea and getting getting it out there. When it's a bit later and I'm I'm a bit more into like the mixing part, even though it kind of happens at the same time. I, I tend to like do it a bit later on, um, like the automation, stuff like that. Um, effects. Yeah, this I added this delay and reverb, I guess, as well, which is being cut off like this. I moved the reverb away from that one bass with automation. So let the drop. Slide. Yeah, it looks like parallel reverb. There's your dry chain that has nothing on it. Then wet. It's parallel reverb and delay. So the delay is wet. Just like a short eighth note. Then the reverb. Pretty big. This is a great re uh, reverb, by the way. Which I like having like this. I don't know why it changes to white every time uh hey we just, we're doing great how are you we got tom with that audio because he can, couldn't figure it out but he can hear us he can hear me the stream he can see you guys i guess in the chat hopefully um yeah after that some saturation and this is even automated to be louder for this part for some reason. I bet we don't need that. So let the drama slide. This was probably like a last minute thing. This almost one of the DB probably went out to the car, listened to, to the track. This part was probably just a bit too quiet, you know, in comparison to the whole track. Sup? We're good, bro. What's up? Don't let the drama fly. 
Is that considered a mid-bass? Yeah, sure. Everything except for the sub here, I would consider, uh, which is you can see is automated off for this part. This is why I love doing ba basses like this in one track. It's so simple. And everything is contained in this one track. This is why I love Ableton as well. What audio interface? Uh, in the studio, we have the RME UFX2 and the EVE monitors, SC208. Thanks. Thanks. Appreciate you for liking the album. Um, yeah, so that was pretty much how I go about most of the bases. This is Shank. It's the lead single off uh, In Case of Fire EP. Oof. Yeah, hold on. Yeah. You guys didn't hear him just now? Oh, I think I think I just figured out why. How Oh my fuck. Yeah, I know why. It worked yesterday, but it probably reset. Yeah, it's on damn. That sucks. Never mind. Next time we'll have it working. I know what the problem is. I thought it was something. Yeah, never mind. Okay, let's keep going. Um, yeah, it, it pretty much was my fault. I fixed it like uh, yesterday it worked. But for some reason it kind of... It reset or something. So it's Streamlabs fault, not mine, if I'm being honest. But yeah, we'll have it uh, working next time. Okay, so since, let's see what's up here. On the group, we have Sidechain, some clipping, and Soothe. Soothe, yeah. Streamlab are the boomers. Streamlabs, yeah. Yeah, I'm keeping this uh, Ableton label, lo loudness level. So for this, this whole part, I wanted to go for a very old school sampled like an old like when you sample an old record so i literally went to splice i think and unfortunately everything's fr frozen and flattened um and i just looked for like horn samples and i made them sound old that's basically they probably didn't sound like this at all right so this is the main one i think Oh, so I do have some of the processing here, just making it wider. And that's also, um, yeah, automated. So it's a bit more mono. It gets wide for the breakdown. Thanks, Dom. Okay. 
this is my favorite part of the song, to be honest. Just this beat. Um, we have this layer. This, yeah, and then this is kind of cool. Electricity sound. Do we make the intros first and then drop or what? Um, it depends. Sometimes we have uh, ideas for drops and we just write a straight up drop. And sometimes it starts from a musical idea. I think for in Shank's case, we had the drop first. And then this came later on. The whole intro and everything. So yeah, the electricity is pretty cool. But if I play all three of these, they are all three are being fed into this all four actually. I do have this as well. To kind of lead in to the beat. So you can hear the electricity come like on the stereo. Yeah. That's being just treated together a little bit. Just cleaning it up. Because there's a lot of mid-range being compressed. A little bit more. I'll turn this off. Have it. Oh, and you can see the automation. So yeah, basically a lot of automation. That's kind of the unspoken golden rule of clean mixing I guess not to say this is the best mix in the world it could be way better like I'm hearing now stuff that I would do completely different but still this is like super important for like clean mix downs right? if I have it off it just leaks into the bass right which also works but it's less of a kind of I wanted this to be a moment for the bass to kind of shine through like, like those tabs right these it doesn't happen just for this one part to make some for some variation sh so it doesn't feel like a loop too much um what else let's see then we have lo-fi strings probably a sample might have been something sounds like it like it was a sample i don't know it's very That's so we have some variation, for, you know, when the kind of intro progresses a little bit. The main sh Shank sample, I showed it earlier. It's from a uh, old hip hop a cappella. You'll be able to like watch the stream later. And uh... no, I never, I never use session view. I don't get the point of it, to be honest. I, I, I do, I guess, if you're making a certain type of, like, loop-based music, like, you know, um, techno and house, and you want to get ideas down, maybe then it's helpful. But for music like what I write, no. It's not loop-based enough to make sense, I guess. I guess some people could uh, find it useful, though. Um... Yeah, so we have this. Yeah, but it's pretty much buried in there. Another one. Like these together. A lot of ambience. If you have a drop done already, how do you go about keeping the vibe going into the intro? That's a good question. Basically, with Shank, it was kind of interesting, I guess, because as you can see, I used a lot of the basses 
from the drop, like the main flow of the drop. Let's do the first one. So it's pretty musical, right? The changes here with the, the notes changing it kind of makes for a, a melody a little bit. Da 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 So I kept that for the intro, just a simplified version of it. Just got rid of a bunch of sounds and filled in with this. Right? It's a simplified version of the drop. And the same fill at the turnaround. Once I had that, then it's simple. You know, you also have the vocals. So on the drop, you have. You got the. You got the. So I made one for the verse that's a bit more lo fi. Distorted, ambient. How long till the stream ends? Oh, you want it to be over so soon? We've been live for two hours now. Which is more than I thought it would take, honestly, to do this. But we can keep going after we finish the breakdown. Um, yeah, so just keeping the vocals from the drop, most of them. Are the same, right? That helps keep like the continuity of the sound of the track. Yeah, then we have this brass tab. Ethos Shark, thank you for the follow. Appreciate it. Let's do many more DTM streams. What's DTM? If you mean by that, like the breakdown streams, for sure. Uh, any advice on continuing to work when you don't really know what to do, feeling discouraged? That happens a lot. Um, uh, any advice? I'd say try to if you're really stuck on a track i'd open a new project or work on something you haven't finished but just give your your mind like a rest from working on that specific song for a day or two maybe even three maybe a week and then come back to it with a fresh uh, perspective that always seems to help me at least some older gems maybe most of like the old dogma resistance stuff was made in cubase um i still i do have cubase installed on the mac so we can open some of the old projects you know what i think that's a cool idea i need to open them before stream and see that everything works though like all the plugins come up and that because you know they're very old and most of them would probably be, be like flattened and just stems. Because back then I used to mix just in audio. I would uh, um, I would just use audio because my computer was worse as well. How many different tracks are you usually working on at any given time? Projects can get crazy. This one is not that big, Shank. Also, you've seen... Like that, just for ex sake of example, this one sound should have been like six, five, six tracks, but it's one. So in Cubase, Cubase this project would be probably 300 tracks, 250. Here it's what, 150? Let's see, it's adds just a track. Don't crash. 142. Is That's not a lot for a Riot track. Um. Yeah, I have some some tracks went up to three hundred easy four hundred.
Chase, I'm happy to help. Yeah. Just keep going. Keep doing the thing. Just working, uh, you know, every day when you have time. And you'll get better. How do you get to a point where you were able to make enough money for music and not need a 9-to-5 job? How do you get... Um, Um, wow, that's a big question. And it's it's going to be different for everybody, you know. Some people make it real fast with their music and start touring and can instantly, you know, quit their jobs. Other people, it takes time. I think it, with the right project, it took me like three years since the day it started till I was able to stop working and completely focus on producing. And it was... Uh, It's basically when you start getting shows, you start getting paid. And um, the paychecks from like streaming services wasn't there. It was literally nothing back then. Like most of our tracks were on labels that didn't really pay out that much. Now it's different. Now we, we do get paid and all from like streaming services for the big tracks you know, you're not going to get rich off it unless you're like uh, Zed or something and get like multiple, you know, tracks with tens, hundreds of millions of streams. But if it's enough to make a living and you keep, keep uh, grinding every day, you can get there. Well... Okay, so brass tab. Probably a sample. I think it's a cashmere sample. Let's see if I can find it. Huh. I can't hear it for some reason. That's weird. All right, see you soon. Next stream, probably. It's one of these samples, I think. One of these. I don't remember. Um, anyway, it's a cashmere sample. I think I just made it stereo. Let's see. Some EQ, distortion, some more EQ, some more distortion, and a lot of clipping. Just to get it louder. And that's also being automated to be louder in the drop. By 3dB looks like. Just for the drops. So it, it can compete with like the loud basses. Yeah. And we have this. Which I probably made in Serum. And flattened. Oh, and I'm kind of automating the old frequency shifter. It's not really doing much. That's weird. Yeah. Um, I use the speakers uh, um, when I am writing, pretty much. Because if I have headphones on, I focus on mix down too much. And it kind of keeps me from being creative and focusing on writing music. And if I'm if I'm just vibing to the speakers, I'm not focusing too much on how shit sounds and how it's mixed. And I'm just focusing on writing. That would that works for me. 
But uh, when I put on headphones, it's like, okay, it's time to kind of really get into details and mix down and shit. Uh, what else? We have this alarm sound. It just happens in the right, uh, background. Focus on writing. Yeah. Yeah, so I do a lot of sound design on speakers. But then when I kind of, I get into the, you know, the time where, when it's time to like really um, finalize sounds, I'll do that on headphones so I can hear if they're distorting, if the low end is crunching. It, that's more, that's harder to pick up on like with speakers sometimes. So I use these, the Audis, LCD X, which are amazing. And they're not forgiving at all. They're very transparent. And if your mix sucks, you'll know just by putting these on. So it's kind of, you know, you know, you need to get used to that to really learn how to mix on them. Here we have two stabs I ended up not using for the track. I probably thought of putting this in and just kept it out. Yeah, just left it out. We have this sample, which is used throughout the track. Pretty important for the track as well, for the tension. Then we have this choir stab. That's another, um, yeah, headphones are uh, important for mixing. This is another example of how I took something from the drop and used it in the intro to keep consistency, but it does sound different. So in the intro, it's very lo-fi and centered, like focused to the middle. And then the drop, it's kind of hi-fi and wide, right? Do you guys want to see this sound? I don't think it's that interesting. It's probably a contact library. Do you want me to move on? Lo-fi vocal rack, yeah. I could show it. Let's see. Unfreeze. Um, okay, cool. Let's see. Let's turn. I don't think this is too interesting, but yeah, it's your usual kind of processing. I don't think it's interesting at all. Let's see what we have here. Okay, contact. That's one. Probably yeah, the main layer. Then, onosphere. Wire full staccato. This is a great patch. I've used it a bunch. Whoops. Um, and then another contact. Yeah. So it's like three different patches together. Honestly, do we need all three? I don't know. Yeah, kind of. They're all doing something a bit different. And it's giving like that stereo width. I could have panned them as well. I didn't do that. I don't know. Probably lazy a little bit. That's being distorted. So it's adding a lot of that brightness into it. That upper mids. OTT. To squash them. 
EQ. That's pretty bright. I would probably not do it as bright now. Limiter. So without this, you get that full sound. Um, filters. That's the old filter rack. Is that doing something? No, it's not even automated. Probably try to use it. Ended up not using it. Um, delay. Is that being used? No. Hmm. Probably thought about adding delay. Ended up not using that. Some more EQ. Vocal lo-fi. Okay, that's being used probably, yeah, everywhere except for the drops to change the sound up a little bit. I can give you guys this rack if you want it. There is a lo-fi, like one knob lo-fi thing I made in the vocal hype rack. This is a bit different. It's a bit more... I need to look into it to see if it has... Yeah. We could check it out. I don't remember. I, I'm pretty sure I made this. If not, I won't give it out. It might be from from somebody else and then I could make a, a one from scratch and give you guys like a cool one. Um, oh, so I use filters here. Yeah, to get rid of like the attack of the sound. But I left that off for the drops. So in the drops it does have the attack. Here it doesn't. Some soothe. Some oh, this is the delay for the verse. Yeah. I added some chorus. Some reverb. Like small, small amounts of that. Compression. That's not listening to the low end from some, for some reason. Not there that there is any. Um, let's see if it's doing much. Yeah, it's doing a fair amount. Some more EQ. That's probably EQ I did while listening to the whole mix. Not in solo like this. Uh, life is much better for workflow and all, but I'm already so deep into FL Studio. Life looks so much more complicated to me. It makes sense that it looks complicated to you because when I... Um, I don't remember why I opened up FL Studio for the first time. Maybe it was for a collab or something. And I was shocked by how different it was from Cubase back then. Like the whole routing um, samples to mixer channels seems so like it seems like an unnecessary step. Like I, I don't understand why would you have that in a digital audio uh, station you know uh, workstation it's kind of weird it's just an unnecessary step uh, with these racks do you make them in the song or do you have separate session I make them in songs um, like uh, I make them while working on tracks and then I, I go like oh wow this is a cool rack let's just save it so I could use it next time and save myself time pr with the processing Um, yeah, EQ, saturation, yeah. Slide. Orchestra. Oh, this is something that didn't make the final cut of the track. It might be terrible. It might be a cool idea that I left out. I didn't even notice this was here, to be honest. Let's see. Cool. 
Yeah, I I guess I went without it. Kind of cool though. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, fun to find uh, things like these, like this, you know, hiding around in projects. The only thing here is the power brass, which is a rack I made, but I had to flatten this out. It was frozen, and I don't have some of the contact libraries I used back then on the PC. But it's just a simple... No, this idea, the uh, the orchestral brass, probably started here and died. Yeah, died with this project, probably. I didn't even remember it was here. Yeah. yeah. That's just layered with that bass, this one. What app do I use? What do you mean? Then we're left with uh, effects and there aren't much. I'm a strong believer of not using a lot of noise effects in tracks. I think they're like a crutch. You know, people, a lot of people I've seen producing will, you know, have a start an idea of a track and immediately reach for like white noise and shit like that to just fill it out. And I, I leave this for the last, you know, session of a track. When it's like really time to kind of polish the mix and the master. And that's when I throw these in. Unless they're like very crucial um, effects. But that mostly I, I, I leave, I, I use here, like in the drums. Like stuff like this. I I treat it like percussion more than effects. This is mostly like impacts and noises, like risers and stuff. This is probably the rack I gave you guys, the noise rack. I just flattened it so I can, you know, kind of make sure everything. Yes, exactly. <laughs> 2012 to 2016. It's very lightly mixed inside. Cashmere stuff. Yes, I do. I do use cashmere stuff. Here you go. That's a cashmere sound. <laughs> then we have... I don't remember if this is a preset. It's like a never-ending riser. Flattened as well. A xylent uplifter. This thing. It's really the not very interesting part of the track. It's a virtual right impact looks like just kind of got rid of some of the high end yeah all that I didn't want that I might have yeah I pitched it down to kind of match the key of the track probably yeah we don't need all that noise up top didn't make sense Um, and this is kind of Automated for some reason. Oh, so here I wanted the top in. For this part. I could have kept it filtered, to be honest. With everything going on, you don't really hear it. UVI Falcon. I've heard about it a lot, to be honest. Hey, do that. What's up? Um... Yeah, then 
some more impacts. Yes, just rumble, shit like that. Cashmere ambience. Filter it out. It's just a rumble beneath like the intro because there's no um, bass going on. So I added that. It's very low in volume though. And what's this? Car rev. There's like a car going by for the pre-drop. It kind of layers nicely with the hand, with him saying hand, I guess. Yeah. Not necessary, but it's kind of cool. Oh, somebody asked about the snare. We could look into that. Let's see. Yeah, we still have the layers. Let's look into this. So, that's the main snare. Probably made this, this in... Chase, thanks for the subscribe. Appreciate you. Um... Uh, I showed the vocals. You could. L I also said where we find them. Some of them old acapellas, some splice, some we record. And uh, I went into the processing of the vocals, and the pretty uh, in the start of the stream was pretty close to when we started. Um, and the stream will be up after it's done, so you can watch it back and see. <clears throat> yeah. So this was probably made in a different project or. No, to be honest, I probably made it here, like this whole thing, and then I bounced it down so it's more easy to manage. This is weird as fuck. What? Probably felt like it was too bright. I darkened it. Yeah, I guess. Then some transient shaping. Yeah. Um... Metal tone. Let's see. <laughs> That's funny. Um, operator. I have it on fixed, so it doesn't matter what note you play. It just matters. Oh, hold up. It matter what frequency you select. <laughs> right. There's a new transient shaper just came out and it's very cool call Stab Multi Man. That's cool. My favorite transient shaper is a uh, transgressor. I use that one a lot. By Boz Digital. It lets you EQ the transient part separately from the sustain part, which is nice. The, a boss fight collab is in the works. It might happen. It might not. We don't know yet. But yeah. Yeah. If you know nothing about music production, this could look very, very complicated. I agree. Yeah. So. What am I using here? Spectral resonator. Just to add some space, dimension, width to it. A bunch of voices. Detuned. That's mixed. Distorted. Um, EQ. Limiter. Then, yeah, just changing the shape of it again. Right? And then I'm adding some reverb to it. Cool. So that, let's turn this one off together with the first snare. Sippy that just followed. Uh. 
Yeah. It's a funny layer to add a snare, but it works in the drop, right? You can never tell that it's just that. Like once you hear it together with the main snare, it kind of works. Um, and then we have that. I don't know where I got it from. Made it. EQ'd. Also, it, it's like ducking away from the transient of the main snare, which is important. I think so is this one. Where is that? Oh, here? Yeah. So it's moving away from the beginning of the snare. This one is adding a lot as well. You can hear it at, on the stereo. Like it kind of, it's very wide and nice. Adds like a top crack to the snare. Um, then all these layers <clears throat> are getting treated together as one. Some EQ, compression with soft clipping. Um, shaper box, I'm using it as a transient shaper. It's being triggered by MIDI. See, if I take it up feels like it's not being triggered huh why is that huh snare tone then we have metal tone yeah so this is off for some reason should be on okay snare Um, will there be remixes for Overkill and Blackwater? Yes. Not remixes, like VIPs. I really want to do one for Blackwater. Um, hopefully I'll find a time to do that. Um, let's see. Let's route that. Probably the snare will sound cleaner now. Yeah. It doesn't sound better though, so let's leave it off. Um, some EQ. Let's see without that. Yeah. This is doing a lot of the lifting of the snare. Do I feel like Mac works better than PC? For me, yes. Christopher from Mexico. Am I, is that right? Yeah, I think so. Hey man, nice to meet you. Do you feel Mac oh, works better than PC? Yeah, I, I think it does. Hey, Focus. Thanks for the follow. Yo, how are you? Um, Yeah, so this EQ, bringing a lot of the top end out. Some <laughs> weird EQing. I'm bringing up like the note the body the fundamental out in the mono signal and then i'm just bringing some out in the stereo as well yeah it's weird this is a cool rack i made for just like ambient for snares for making them sound a bit more have more depth depth wait if i take it off it's a bit dead, right? Gives it more depth. Sounds more 3D. I don't know how you would call that. Um, saturator. Some clip clipping. That's it. That's the snare. Yeah. 
Well, I think we went through everything. Unless you guys have any any more questions about the track. That's it, Buzzy. Thank you. I'm glad you guys liked it. So yeah, are we, I think we went through everything. Took us about two hours, a bit more. But yeah. Awesome. Whip sneak peek. Thanks, Cat. Thank you. Down with your love. House VIP. Um, I'm going to have to look for it. Yeah, I, I promise. I promise I'll play it. Let's see if I can find it. Yeah, so we went through a lot today, I think, on the on the track breakdown. So there might might be some uh, rewatch value to this stream if you guys want to go back and then look through everything. Um, oops, sorry. I need to fix this mic cable. Okay. Let's try to find that down with your love VIP. Make a yala habibi tune. Yeah. Um Okay, cool. Hopefully I have an export of that track because I don't know if the project I could try to open up the project, see if it's uh Yeah. If it works. How how many times have we been asked to collaborate with the other riots? Wow. More than I can count. More than I can count, for sure. Um, Okay, I found it. Let's see. I found it. Oh, and Tom just sent it to me as well. I, I already found it. Okay, cool.
played it on Ultra. That's right. We played it on our uh, at our ultra set, but I I don't know I wasn't very happy with it, and we decided to kind of not release it. What do you guys think? Should we? Uh, last question. What tracks did we like on uh, Monster Cat this year? I haven't listened to any, to be honest. Yeah, I guess so that VIP is out there. I th For some reason, I thought nobody ever heard it. I forgot we played it uh, and uploaded it to YouTube. Uh, yeah. Maybe we'll finish it on stream. We could try to finish it on stream as well and just release it for free. Let's see if I can find anything else. That's kind of cool. Um, any other bass house tracks? Ah, uh, let's see. Ta ta ta. That's the old. Yeah, I have this one. I don't know if it's cool or not. This is like an unreleased track. Big uh, Joyride influence inspired. Okay, so this is the Down With Your Love uh, drop. Just took a stab at making it into an original song, which never got released. So it's the same drop. So we dabbled in house music a little bit, but it, I think this track is like a finished track. Maybe it doesn't have a second drop. Let's see. Electricity Reese. I love this patch.
That's that. So it's not finished, but uh, yeah. Hmm. What's this one? Oh, that's the one from last stream. We made this last stream. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, it was a cold-blooded, premeditated murder. It was, it's a, it's an old expert of that. Oh. There's all sort of tracks laying around in this folder, the export folder that didn't make the cut or were just sitting on for maybe an album or a longer EP. This is kind of a different vibe, by the way. There's no Juggernaut VAP yet. be one of my favorite tracks I've ever written to be honest it's very I know it's not a banger but it's fun to listen to I think it's a vibe it could use like a vocal maybe like a lo-fi old old movie vibe kind of vocal over it but it's pretty much done I think it ends thank you zippy yeah Is there anything else? Yeah, exactly. It could be like the last track on the album. Or, yeah. There's this one. I sold my soul to the devil today. Thought it would help me in some kind of way. But now I'm all fucked up. I said I'm all fucked up. I sold my soul to the devil today. It would help me in some kind of way But now I'm all fucked up I said I'm all fucked up I sold my soul to the devil today 
kind of cool but it, it 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 is a bit dated to me like that drop it's very skrillex 2016 kind of thing yeah so we ended up scratching that track as well what else yeah that's pretty much it i could play a little bit of a new one Yeah, the trap drop. Which one, Sippy? The the sad break, neuro break track for a collab? This one has been played out a lot by Slander, actually, in their sets. Oh, the trap one. Yeah, it's, it might be worth a stab, like working on it, opening it up and trying to make something different. For sure. And let that bitch meditate to the... This is one of my favorites. What's that? Uh, with that track that has oh shit in the pre-drop, has brasses and stuff in the beginning of the drop. I've been waiting on that for too long. Oh, that one was okay. So you guys know Makina, right? Makina used to have a third drop, and it was very heavy. And we decided to pull it out of that track. Now, I'm going to try to find that drop and play it. Um, let's see. I, it's a bit, it sounds a bit like more of the old Riot sort of dubstep. But let's see if you guys really like it. Maybe we can, you know, make a track out of it. Because right now it's just in our sets, that drop, and we're playing it with a Zomboy track, um, which I forget the name of every time. What's it called? If Tom's listening, he probably remembers. He could tell me. Um, come on. Zomboy. Let's see.
Born to survive. There we go. Born to survive. Yeah. Found it. So, this is the drop we took out of Makana, and we're just playing it out live right now. We might finish it, make a track out of it. That's that. Um, it does have some uh, spaghetti vibes to it. You're right. And yeah, too heavy for Machina, so we took it out. Um, yeah, I don't know what else I have to, pl you know, something I could play you guys. That's pretty much it. There is one maybe, maybe quick. I could give you guys a quick peek. Um, Let's see. It's probably out there, though. We played it a lot in our sets, so maybe next time I'll play some other stuff as well. Demo... <laughs> Singles. <clears throat> yeah, we played it in Tel Aviv at the show. I played this one last stream in Los Angeles, left behind scenes well. reminiscent of war torn city. More than a hundred square blocks were decimated by fire and looters, and few buildings were left intact. Firemen were harassed by snipers and brick throwing hoodlums. The riots in Los Angeles have written a sorrowful page in American history. Back to these fucking streets. kind of break down that could be interesting actually maybe next stream or something or later down the road some stream um most of those projects i need to kind of open beforehand and see that everything's working so i'll have to do it before um uh, we decide to do it on stream but yeah so you guys like the house tracks huh Maybe I have a few more. I don't think anything interesting, to be honest, though. Um, Mimi says... Yeah. What's this one? The way you touch me. The way you hold me. 
Yeah, I remember this one. Another one we scratched. Maybe we should make a... Maybe we could make a base house alive, alias and just, you know, upload to SoundCloud. Good night, water. Thanks for Thanks for joining the stream. something would probably only release if it's a uh, part of an album or something like that you know make it tie into like a big piece of art where you could tell a story like this as a single from riot would be kind of weird i think yeah Anyway, you guys, I think I'm going to sign off for today. I'm going to go live uh, Tuesday. Um, probably around 12 or 11. Um, p uh, yeah, PM. PST. Um, I'll see you guys then. Yeah, this was great. I had a lot of fun showing you guys Hank, playing someone release stuff. Uh, and let us know, you know, um, on socials, what you want to see next time, what you want to see us do. We'll try to have Tom on as well with sound. Yeah, this was fun. Well, see you guys next time.